So we heard about uh, budget hotels and then luxury hotels, and now what is this service apartment or service residence all about? Today we just cover a little bit of the definition of service apartments, a little bit about the industry, what is uh, this industry about, uh, and of course it will be uh, you know, not fair for me to not mention the risks in this industry as well, in this uh, asset class, as well as the opportunities and, and trends moving forward. A very simple uh, definition of service apartments really is instead of a hotel accommodation, it is for those who want an apartment accommodation uh, with all the full hotel service uh, that, uh, uh, to meet the needs of the business clientele. Uh, but we're actually catering a little bit more to uh, slightly longer stay than the one, two days. So although we call it short term, it's from three days maybe to a week, two weeks, or midterm, uh, and then long term can be as uh, long as a year or even more. Unlike uh, purely rental apartments, uh, service apartments come fully fitted out. So all you need to do is bring your suitcase uh, and the apartment is all there already uh, with cutleries and furniture and anything and everything you need in an instant. Just bring your clothes. Full facilities uh, from you know, gym to playroom to uh, uh, wellness center, business center, pool. Uh, one thing though different with hotels is that we don't have massive, huge ballrooms. Uh, we don't have really, uh, you know, six-story uh, lobbies. Uh, it's, it's, it's sized down and uh, only one sort of, most of the time, one all-day dining restaurant to take care of the uh, restaurant needs. And so one of the uh, benefits, I think, to investor for service apartment really versus hotels are in a study done by CB. Uh, Richard Ellis, uh, the building efficiencies, because we don't have the massive ballrooms, uh, the restaurants, the multiple restaurants, uh, and a lot huge big uh, back of the house areas, the efficiency uh, you know, of the service apartment can go up to 60 or 70 percent. In other words, from gross, gross floor area to net leasable area, it's about 60 to 70 percent. In the study here, uh, a typical hotel, and probably not so much uh, what Eric mentioned about budget hotels, they, they can be as efficient. But um, for a service apartment, they, it's about 60 to 70 versus hotels about, uh, in this case, 40, 47 to 50% 50, 50 efficiency. Service apartments also give full uh, services, 24-hour uh, concierge, laundry, housekeeping, uh, maintenance, all-day dining, connectivity, safety, security. Again, probably not so much uh, in sort of multiple restaurants, not so much uh, turn down service, and even on uh, requests really, um, weekends, many who are staying long term don't want to be disturbed. Of, you know, uh, they want to slip in for, for the weekends. And so let me capture that a little bit in what, uh, you know, in this diagram, it's a relationship between uh, the size of the apartment and the, uh, the length of stay uh, versus the services given as well as the price. On this spectrum really is the hotel, the budget hotel, the mid-class hotel, and the luxury hotel. And I think that for luxury hotels, you get bigger size uh, rooms. Like I, I know the Ritz-Carlton uh, in Singapore is about, what, 56 square meters? Uh, just now, Eric Van Kuhlen mentioned that uh, his properties can be from 16 square meters to about 22 square meters. So uh, therein lies that uh, small to, to larger size, but they're actually capturing that uh, short-term market. On the other side of the spectrum really is the villas, bungalows, rental apartments uh, that are apart uh, condominiums. They're much bigger. They can also be split between the budget, the mid, and the high-end. Uh, high-end uh, condominium uh, for rental can be uh, with concierge service as well and butler service as well, but uh, they're larger apartments. And 
if I look at this spectrum, hotels take care of maybe one, two, three days stay guests, mainly. Rental apartments, I think most of them would go for the one year, two years, three years. Right smack in the middle, uh, we're beginning to find more and more customers. Uh, companies are sending out task force, project groups that will come into a, pro a country, maybe work a week, a month, a few months, get the project done, get it uh, finished, get it started, and then get them out of the uh, country. So that huge gap there is where the service department comes in because really they won't be staying more than maybe one, two, three years to have uh, you know, their own domestic help or whatever to, to take care of the, uh, the, their stay. Uh, but if they stay more than one, two days or more than a week, uh, a hotel room might be kind of uh, constricted for them. And so there is a niche market uh, for the uh, sort of mid to long term stay, I guess, that we are capturing. In terms of cost structures too, uh, this is a, a study that's combined with Haworth Hotels, uh, C.B. Richard Ellis and the uh, Quantity Surveyor, Rawlinson's. Uh, in terms of GOPs, because we don't have a lot of the other operating revenues as well as the other operating uh, expenses, uh, you find that in this study uh, of close to 100 over hotels and service apartments, the GOP line taken all the way down before fixed, fixed costs and fees for service apartments around about 50% and hotels about 37-40%. So there are kind of differences in cost structures that uh, we can look at. This is the latest study by Haworth that uh, closes in more of the Asian-based uh, service apartments, 54 service apartments were surveyed. The GOP level uh, is up around about 55, and some of course 60. Uh, you know, a peculiar uh, thing about service apartment is that 80%, probably 70 to 80% of our clientele are corporate guests. And that's, the reason really is that uh, leisure guests, unless they're staying really longer term, uh, you know, if you're staying on going on holiday two, three days, uh, maybe service apartment is, is not what you're looking for. But there are some who are with families. Uh, you know, they feel that uh, they want the, the comforts of home, away from home. And we begin to see a big market of that, climbing up from 10 to 20%. But still, a big base, 80% are corporate guests, relocation market, corporate groups, training groups, uh, corporate meeting groups. Part of the uh, little bit of the industry is uh, in this service apartment uh, survey by Global Service Apartment Industry Report 2011. Uh, the extended stay market surveyed over three years grew about uh, compounded annual growth rate about 34%, regional coverage about 7, 7%, 17%. Uh, over a period of three years, 140,000 uh, apartment units added on. So it's a growth industry. The, the supply of service apartments is climbing, not only in the States, in Europe, and Australia, which, where it started, but a lot in the emerging markets in Asia. In this study by STR Global, it shows not only that the supply is coming up, but across the region of Asia, uh, Europe, Middle East, uh, Australia, and uh, Africa, the demand for service residences is climbing tremendously. Uh, a quotation here by uh, Institute of Travel Meeting, service apartments have become an integral part of many company accommodation programs over the past two years. And we've been to see that in all our properties uh, even in, in London, uh, uh, David said he's been there, uh, stayed with us many times. Uh, it's not only because of Olympics, but in London, in Paris, they're, we're facing 91%. In Australia, Sydney, uh, Seoul, um, China, occupancies have been uh, way above the 80 to 90%. One reason, I think, is that, of course, a lot uh, of companies are also looking at moving into 
lower cost centers, looking into emerging markets, bringing a lot of their uh, production and staff over to the emerging market. And we see a lot of movement there as well. Here is a chart of the growth um, of the extended service uh, uh, stay room supply in the US, but we may find that also in places like Jakarta, Myanmar, Vietnam, Manila, Bangkok, China, India, tremendous growth. Same here also uh, with the revenues, the, the average rates that has been climbing up. Now, all these are good stuff. Um, there are risks and challenges to this industry. What are they? Firstly, because uh, especially in, in Asia, uh, it's a new market, it's a growing market. So a lot of times, uh, service department face uncertainties in licensing. What do you place it under? Singapore, for instance, is under the Residential Act, not under Hotel Act. Uh, in the, in the China, for instance, the, uh, previously, you could run service apartments under the Residential uh, Act, and uh, as long as you have the full strata title. Uh, and then now they've moved on to, you need to have what they call a SIP, a special industry permit to operate a service apartment. And uh, it might be soon where they actually might want to insist on a commercial zoning for service apartment before you can operate. So it's, this is a, uh, a, a risk that we need to factor in. It's a new industry, especially emerging markets, uh, but yet that's where the opportunity is. There's a lack of clear accreditation. Our example, four, five star hotels, yes, we understand, but what is four, five, who rates four, five star service apartment? That, again, probably uh, would have to grow a little bit more in, in um, time to come. Uh, the reason also is because we, we, we actually look forward to that. We actually need that. There are a lot of, um, I wouldn't say fly-by-night operators, but there are a lot of uh, different uh, players in the field where basically they have a few empty units. They'll throw in some housekeeping staff and call it service apartment. Uh, and, you know, that hurts, I guess, the industry if there's no accreditation. Thirdly, actually, um, is that one of the strengths of service apartment is the stability of long-term stay. Example, during the SARS period in Hong Kong, in Singapore, hotels experience maybe 5-10% occupancy. I still remember those days, but in service apartment, we're averaging 70%. Why? The businesses are still there. The customers are still staying. You know, they have not moved out. Uh, but obviously, you know, if, it's, if it's a SARS lasting for you know, one year or so, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, during the financial, Asian financial crisis, average occupancies were in the 70s as well versus hotels. Uh, during the great financial crisis, uh, 2008 and 9, same. So it's stable, but the flip side is uh, we are not able then to take advantage of yield as much as hotels. So example, uh, Hong Kong is very good for this. When, there's, when the whole city is full, hotel rates double, right? Uh, we can't do it as fast as hotels. So then, then again, that is a challenge for service apartment. We have stability, but how do we uh, be nimble? Our, we're beginning to see not only relocation companies are putting their, their customers and guests to service apartments, but now slowly corporate companies says we want the ease of global distribution system. We want the ease of making bookings through the internet. And so this is something that our service apartment should do a little bit more and actually champion this. Uh, we're looking to global distribution systems, requests for proposals. Now, more and more corporate companies are getting used to service apartments and putting it into RFPs. Our online travel agents, uh, now a lot of our bookings coming through have minimum length of stay, but people are getting used to it, they're coming through. Yeah, brand websites, loyalty programs. So this is something that uh, is part of change, but I think the industry is growing and uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, mileage out from this. And lastly, just share a little bit of uh, kind of new trends and opportunities. Uh, it's a growing number of younger, what I call E-generation uh, 
customers, tech savvy, they are they're young, they're on the move, uh, but they're very well traveled. And I don't think they're just looking for budget, budget as in pricing. Yes, they have that uh, limitation, they can't maybe stay uh, at the Four Seasons or whatever, but they are looking for something that um, is, is designer based, something new, something that's within the price range, but definitely tax savvy. And this article by New York Times, um, it's really a big market. Internet generation puts travel business on a different path from airlines to hotels, service apartments. Uh, if we don't catch this, uh, we're going to miss big boat. All right. So um, in this case, what we think could be a new opportunity is actually a cross between hotel and the typical long-term service apartment, what we call the hotel residence. Sorry. Uh, it has to be tax heavy, it's got to be wired up, and not only wireless, of course, but it's got to be really fast broadband wireless, you know, things like that, anywhere, everywhere. Uh, it's got to be boutique, it's got to be designer based. So it pushes uh, the boundaries a little bit more. Okay, and I think this is going to be a huge, big market. And in Fraser, we started a new brand called Capri. So a bit of advertisement here, sorry. Uh, and then, you know, of course, we have the Fraser, which is a traditional service residence, but we're really hoping to overlay uh, Capri into our world map as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>